All right, welcome back to Power Forging Workshop. I thought I'd do a little intro with all of the machines off so we don't have to listen to the rotary phase converter or the style humming in the background. Uh, you still get the echo of, of the, the vaulted ceilings though, so there is that. All right, so in the last video I finished the top here. I've got, let's see, about four threads in there. I may have to remake this, so if you saw the last video, you'll see how I, I had a little tapping fail. If not, go watch it. Pretty funny. Um, I guess I learned that in a tapping cycle, uh, simply hitting cycle stop is not going to stop that thing from, from feeding down. I believe you can hit cycle stop and reset or hit the e-stop button, which I didn't do. It was fine. That's a, that's a tough, tough little half 13 tap. There's nothing wrong with it. It just basically reamed about five millimeters of steel out of this part. All right, so there's that done. So today I'm going to be working on the uh, reciprocal part of that, the bottom foot that will um, bolt to that top. And here it is on the laptop. I've already done the first stop, which is to, uh, to, to face its spot and drill um, through the part. Uh, the nominal size for uh, the half 13. Um, I think it's 27 64 uh, size drill. Um, and now it's flipped in the jaw, or flipped in the vise, um, and ready for um, the second op, which uh, I'll, I'll show on film here in, in detail. This is the interesting side uh, of, of the part of this part because you've got the ramp, you've got uh, the counter bore, we're going to do some threads. Um, I don't have a countersink uh, small enough to, the right size to go in, in here and countersink this hole, so I'm just going to do it by hand. I'll zip in there with uh, with the drill and, and prep those for a tapping cycle. So that'll be interesting. Um, you'll notice in a lot of my videos I, I'm trying to get away with um, a 12.7 or a half inch uh, four flute end mill um, and it just seems to be too much for this machine if I really slow it down and uh, don't let it eat too much it's fine otherwise every time that ball screw changes in the Y it it, uh, it screams it chatters it whatever insert the adjective but the style doesn't like that uh, half inch end mill so I'm switching uh, down to a 3 8 end mill and I'm running it um, in mild steel. I think it's about 500, if, okay, depends on what language you're speaking here, about 500 inches per minute, or 500 uh, surface, feet, surface feet per minute. Um, and I think the chip load of that is about four or five thou. I could pull it up. In metric, which I'm trying to convert over to, here we go, we're moving the hat. In metric, this 3.8 is running, let's see, about five grand RPM, 5,000 RPM, or 5,100, about 152 meters per minute. The feed rate is about 1,100 millimeters a minute. And the feed per tooth is about five and a half, point zero zero five six ish uh, feed per tooth. So it's one size smaller. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm throwing it out there is, well, this is kind of like a diary, but I want to see how the smaller uh, end mill will work and see if the, the machine um, argues with that. The reason I like the half inch, it's got a lot longer flute length um, and I can stick more out of the, out of the, to out of the collet. So there are, there are advantages of it, but we'll see. It never complains with the quarter, so the half just might be too much for this machine, uh, at least of the way I've, I'm programming it. All right, so we're going to take the hat off and then face it. I'm going to, I'm going to do, I mean, you could take a, my face mill and, you know, take off half an inch of material. I think that's about what we got here. Come on. Okay, I got about this much material to, to remove. It looks like it's about 10 millimeters almost half an inch. Um, there are two, two ways you, two, two schools of thought here. You could take your face mill and just um, blast down whatever you're in passes of a millimeter or, or more, um, but that's gonna throw a lot of chips out and uh, it la it's loud. Um, for fun, I'm gonna do a 2D adaptive with the 3 8 inch end mill and just zip around it in this pattern to take it off. 
Should be fun. Lots of chips, right? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna leave about uh, half a millimeter on the top, and then face mill that, and then I'll have a nice clean surface to get a new Z height, a new G54 in the Z on on top, um, actually, and X and Y. So I'll get a nice accurate G54 on a fully machined um, surface to then go on to uh, do the bores. After the bore, we're going to do these inserts, and then we're going to ramp down. Lots of retracts in that ramp. Doesn't matter what I do; it's just going to retract. It's not. It's not a. a, a where's my time? Oh, it needs to be regenerated. Anyway, it doesn't take that long to do. And then we're going to chamfer it. Chamfer it. I'm going to chamfer it by hand, and then we'll tap it. All right, let's make some chips. Okay, I don't like that. I'm gonna reprogram that. And we'll try again and see how it sounds. I've got it backwards in the vise. Next step is I gotta flip it and then reprobe. Get a new WCS.
should be the contour. I gotta do a little hand uh, chamfer <laughs> before this tap goes in.
fingers crossed this works. Hey, not bad. Pretty. Pretty good looking thread. Not sure what happened in this contour. My quarter in gen mill about, well, tried to start a fire. Okay, a little go, no go. Half 13. Okay, we're a go. Yep. Okay, part done. I think you probably, my head's probably cut off here. Um, all right, so with this part, I wanted to clean up my contour and remove the snipe. I did that. I played around with the settings. I think I did. A, I let in at about 20 degrees. Um, but I think the real problem was uh, the very last pass was taking uh, the biggest step over. I was taking two skim overs, then a big step over, and I was grabbing into the part and sniping. And so by reducing the step over, the maximum step over to half a mil, I was able to have a nice finish pass. All right. Uh, one other thing that I learned is my probing is most definitely off in the Y. Um, this was a 25.4 wide material, 25.4 millimeters. And um, the part is only 22 or 23. I, I wanted to be able to take this forge, not forge scale, this, um, I guess you'd call it that. Anyway, this carburization off all sides and it's still on this side. This is the side closest to me. So yeah, I'm gonna re, I need to recalibrate the probe um, from start to finish, just go through everything. Um, I did the ramp again and I kind of like how that turned out. The step over was very coarse and it gives it kind of like a, a Jaws look, which is really cool. So, um, clearance hole works well, threads are perfect. Let's see if it uh, goes on here just fine. So this registers over that hole like that. And then this, hopefully I have enough some threads in here that'll catch from my botch tapping. Well, I do. Let me get another bolt. Let's see. One inch or an inch and a half. Okay, so the idea is first this way but that makes the jaws push apart and then this bolt will even them back up again righty tidy right there you go. not going anywhere. Nice. All right, so there's version three. Not bad at all. Here's version one. You can see underneath. It's not very beefy. Oh, come on, camera. I want my old phone back. Version three is much more beefy. A little smaller pro profile, rounded corners. Oh, it's on there good. Here's version two, also good. But now, I can put that vise just about anywhere I want on this table, or that uh, table over there, same top, or I can take it off because I quite often like to have this entire 
four by eight uh, surface to work on. <laughs> it's an absolute mess, right? And no, I'm not drinking beer out here. This is actually to test bottle openers I make. All right. Thanks again for tuning in. Cheers.